A few months ago, my buddy Shannon brought over his entire collection of Axis and Allies games. Looking at it, we decided to do a walkthrough video of the entire Axis and Allies series and drink a few beers along the way. If you missed it, here you go. Now, Shannon had nearly every version of Axis and Allies that's ever been printed, but he didn't have a copy of one of the hardest to find versions, Guadalcanal. Well, after watching our video, a local player and our new best friend, Mr. Jason Weed, reached out to let us know that he had one of these rare gems and he let us borrow it. Let's make it hot. Welcome to Board Game Nation. My name is Gary Blevins. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're doing something a bit different. This will be our first video where we take a look at a much older game. Okay, the game came out in 2007. I'm not going to call it vintage because that just makes me feel old, but we'll call it a throwback. At any rate, the game is designed for two players and it plays in two to three hours and is for ages 13 and up. The objective is to be the first player to reach 15 victory points by controlling airfields and sinking enemy carriers and battleships. Unlike the larger Axis and Allies games that feature a whole continent or the entire world as the combat theater, this game focuses in depth on the Battle of Guadalcanal, making this what's referred to as a local game. Now, I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but if you've talked to those that have, they're typically pretty big fans. Real quick, the Battle of Guadalcanal isn't all that well known, so here are the cliff notes. Guadalcanal is the name of the largest of the Solomon Islands, which is a chain of small islands in the South Pacific. They're about 3,600 miles from Hawaii and about 1,000 miles off the coast of Australia, and during World War II were a protectorate of the United Kingdom. The Battle of Guadalcanal, more accurately called the Guadalcanal Campaign, lasted just over six months beginning on August 7, 1942. A little bit more later, but for now, let's take a look at the game and its components. All right, Axis and Allies Guadalcanal. This is the box art. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, we've got ages 13 and up, two to three hours for two players. So I'll show you the rest of the box later. I happen to know that the pieces inside are loose. So let's uh, see what we got. Inside of the box is empty. We've got our four piece, four fold map. We'll look at that more in just a second. Here's our rule book. This is actually one of the nicer rule books in the entire series. Um, it's glossy. It's got lots of the illustrations and graphic art. The uh, product photography inside is actually really good, which is nice. And uh, we're going to talk about these pieces as we get there. But uh, it puts the unit descriptions towards the front of the rule book, which is different than uh, some of the other games. But uh, I think it works pretty well. And there's a nice little thing here at the end that we'll talk about in just a minute. And there's the back. All right, so these two pieces are actually part of the map itself. You can see that they've got flags on the back. Obviously, this is Japan, this is uh, the US Navy, and these will go on the map. We'll show you more about that in a second. Two reference cards, uh, one for each power. Uh, obviously, the United States and Japan. And then we've got just the, uh, the flags on the back. All right, inside we've got the pieces. You can see we've got a lot of extra space in here. The plastic molding is good, uh, but, uh, but it doesn't lend itself to storing it uh, vertically, which is kind of what we want to be able to do. But we have something unique to this game uh, that I've never seen in any other game, um, in any other franchise even, is the, the battle box, right? So the way this works is you've got 12 dice in here and you're gonna shake it and then you're gonna get it to settle and you're listening for that sound. And then once you have that, you slide it out. And that is the outcome of the battle. All right, so you've got hits on the side and what you can hit with which dice and all that. This is not a great roll for anybody who's actually played this game. So when you're ready, you just shake it up again. Try to get to where you don't hear the rattling anymore. And then pull it out and there's your next round of hits. It's pretty cool. It's quite the space saver actually. You don't need to, uh, to throw it around, but it does make a fair amount of noise. But some specifications on the back, which can be helpful for quick play, but uh, all in all, a pretty cool thing, I think. And then, of course, we've got all the pieces, chips, uh, red, and, red and gray, no green chips in this box, thankfully. So let's lay these out so that we can take a proper inventory.
Now that we know that we have all the pieces, let's take a look at the game all set up. I'm a big fan of storing my games vertically uh, versus horizontally. It prevents this from happening. So we're gonna try to help Jason out here and we're gonna do a little packaging for him. I think we can get all this stored pretty well using four snack bags and one sandwich size bag. So let's see what we get. All right, there we go. So I think we probably could have done it with four snack size bags, but the sandwich size bag works just as well. And uh, this now gives us the ability to store it vertically without it making a huge mess. All right, let's finish packing it up and get it back on the shelf. These actually do fit right in that little space there. So those sit nice and snug and the rule book sits in the same spot. Put these extra two pieces of the map right on top. And then of course the map sits on the top and that, my friends, let's go out and out. Now we can actually show you the sides. and the bottom without making a huge mess. <laughs> when the Guadalcanal campaign began, the US Navy was still recovering from the attack on Pearl Harbor. While they had been successful in Midway and in the Coral Sea, they'd always been on the defensive. Historically, the American attack on Guadalcanal is seen as the first major offensive action by the Allies in the Pacific theater. Though successful, their victory was far from certain and their ability to maintain their foothold even less so. And this is where the game designer, Larry Harris, starts us off. August of 1942. The Americans have moved into the area with lots of sea units, but with land units that are holding on by a shoestring. The Japanese are entrenched and ready to mount a counter assault. This was long before the Americans had anything resembling air superiority, so every fighter, bomber, and airfield was absolutely critical, such is the case in the game. Based on the setup, it looks like the action fires up right away, with some areas even starting with mixed units. It's official. I have to play this game. Longtime members of Board Game Nation might remember the interview that I got a chance to do with the man himself, Mr. Larry Harris. If you haven't seen it, here's that link. During that interview, I asked him about his inspiration for the game, and he shared an amazing story about how his father served in the Guadalcanal campaign. His ship was hit by a mine and sank. He fought the Japanese in a number of islands and extraordinarily close quarters. It was really an amazing story. Now, on the last two pages of the rulebook for this game, Larry talks about that and even includes a number of quotes from his father's World War II diary. It really is something special. Other than the original Nova Games version, Guadalcanal might be the most expensive Axis and Allies game out there. I'm shooting this in December of 2021, and there are currently complete copies in okay condition, listed on eBay for between $150 and $200. I'd rate this copy in very good condition, and I'm guessing it could sell for $225 to $250 US. Though I don't think Jason's planning to sell it. We've got a few other throwbacks and even vintage games in the pipeline. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when those are ready. Next up will be another Larry Harris classic, Conquest of the Empire. When it's ready, they'll be right here. For our other unboxing videos, click right here. For our latest bit of mayhem, right this way. And if you're ready to join Board Game Nation, click here to subscribe. My name is Gary Blevins. This is Board Game Nation. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.